Well, how would we go about solving a linear system of equations using matrices? Our steps are as follows. The first thing we're going to have to do is write the augmented matrix. After we write the augmented matrix, we're going to use our row operations to get it in row echelon form. Again, what does echelon form mean? Well, remember that was a main diagonal of ones, zeros underneath the ones, and then the rest of them are just numbers. Any number will do. So this is that echelon form that we were talking about before. Now, after you get in an echelon form, you're going to use substitution to solve for the variables. Our answer here is going to be an ordered triple. That means it's going to be three things within parentheses. So I gave you an example of what that's going to look like here. So here's our system of equations. So step one told us what we're going to do is we're going to go from this system of equations to an augmented matrix. Step two says use row operations. So we're going to do all these row operations, and then that's going to be where a lot of the work comes from. But we want to choose row operations that give us that main diagonal of one and zeros underneath. Then step three says to use substitution to solve for the variables. So what you need to do is you need to rewrite the matrix into a system of equations. So we're going to change back into a system with variables, substitute, and solve. I also said that our answer was going to be an ordered triple. For example, that's what an ordered triple will look like. So these things are that step three. Now notice I said we're going to get back into our linear equations with variables and do the substitution. That's why it's called back substitution, because you leave a matrix form and you go into your linear equation form and then you substitute and solve. Well, let's take a look at an example of doing this. So example four, we want to solve this system of linear equations using a matrix. So the first thing you need to do is get yourself into an augmented matrix. Again, that would be the brackets with the vertical bar closer to the right. And then you got to write the coefficients of all the variables and those answers within this matrix. So I say three, one, negative one, and nine for the first equation, then negative one, negative one, three, and three for that second equation, and one, two, negative one, and zero. Recall that the goal is to have a main diagonal of ones with zeros underneath them. So what you need to do is you need to just try to figure out what can I do to get the ones there. So your first goal is to get this number to be a one. Well, if I look here, row three already has a one in that position, so I can do the row operation of swapping out rows one and row three. So if I swap row one and row three, my matrix becomes one, two, negative one, zero. Row two stays the same as negative one, negative one, three, and three, and row three becomes three, one, negative one, and nine. So what we've done so far is swap two rows, but notice now that I've swapped two rows, this here is a one, and I need a one in that position. Then I need zeros underneath this one. Well, let's use row operations to get zeros underneath that one. If I added row one with row two, won't one plus a negative one give me zero? Yeah, so next row operation that I can do is say row one plus row two, and I'm letting you know that's gonna be my new row two. So I'm gonna do it on the side over here. If I take row one, which is one, two, negative one, and zero, and I add that to row two, which is negative one, negative one, three, and three, well, I'm gonna get one plus a negative one is zero, two plus a negative one is one, negative one plus three is positive two, and zero plus three is three. So when I write my matrix now, row one stayed the same as one, two, negative one, and zero. My new row two is at zero, one, two, three, and row three stayed the same as three, one, negative one, and nine. So I got that to be a zero. Now I need this three to be a zero. 
In order to be a zero, I need to add it with a negative three. Well, if I were to multiply row one by negative three and add that to row three, that number will cancel. So I'm gonna multiply row one by a negative three and add it to row three. And I'm gonna do it over here on the side. If I multiply row one by negative three, I get negative three, negative six, positive three, and zero. Again, I'm going to add that to my row three of three, one, negative one and nine. If I add now, negative three plus three is zero. Negative six plus one is negative five. Three plus a negative one is a positive two. And finally, zero plus nine is nine. So this is my new third row. So let's go ahead and write our matrix. Remember row one did not change. Row two did not change. But my row three became zero, negative five, two, and nine. So we are getting closer to getting this in echelon form. Remember echelon form, I need a main diagonal of ones and then zeros underneath all those ones. So let's see what we have so far. This is a one with zeros underneath it. Then the next main diagonal would have a one there. Well, I just lucked out that that already has a one in row two in the second position. But now I need to get a zero underneath that one. Well, how would I get a zero underneath that one? Well, if I were to multiply row two by positive five and add it to row three as my new row three, I would get a zero in that position. So let's do that on the side here. If I multiply row two by five, well zero times five is zero, one times five is five, two times five is 10, three times five is 15, and then we have row three, which is zero, negative five, two, and nine. If I add these, zero plus zero is zero, five plus a negative five is zero, 10 plus two is 12, and 15 plus nine is 24. So this is my new third row. So I'll write my matrix. And again, you're looking at row one not changing, and you're looking at row two not changing, but row three became zero, zero, 12, and 24. We are almost there. We have a one with zeros underneath it, a one with a zero underneath it. The last thing I need to do is get that 12 to be one. In order to get 12 to be one, I can divide it by 12, but I don't have division as a row operation, but dividing by 12 is the same as multiplying by one over 12. So if I multiply row three, by one over three, to get a new row three, I'll have a one in that position. So we're looking at row one not changing, row two not changing, and row three, well, one twelfth times zero is zero, one twelfth times zero is zero, one twelfth times twelve is just one, and one twelfth times twenty-four is two. Again, think of it as dividing by twelve when I multiply by one twelfth. So twelve divided by twelve is one. Twenty-four divided by twelve is two. Well, now we are in echelon form. We have that main diagonal of ones and zeros underneath those ones. So we have gone from step one here to step two. The third thing I need to do is make it back into an equation and solve. So we're doing that back substitution. Okay, well, let's make these back into equations. So if I come here, well, this becomes the coefficient of x, y, z, and this is the answer. x, y, z, answer. x, y, z, answer. So I rewrite this as x plus 2y minus 1z or just minus z is equal to 0. The next equation, well, I don't have an x, so I don't need to write it. Then I would write 1y or just y plus 2z is equal to 3. And finally, for my last row, I don't have an x and I don't have a y, so I would just write 1z or just z is equal to 2. Well, I now need to solve the system knowing this information. Well, I could use substitution to solve the system. If I know what z is, I can plug that information into this equation and find y. So let's start there. So I have y plus 2. Instead of z, I'm going to write what z is. z happens to be 2, and that's going to equal 3. Well, I can solve this for y. 2 times 2 gives 4. If I subtract 4 from both sides, y is equal to negative 1. So now I have that z is equal to 2, and y is equal to negative 1. The only thing left that I need to solve for is x. 
well, I can plug in the information for y and z in the top equation and be able to solve for x. So let's do that. I have x plus 2. Instead of y, I'm going to write what y is equal to, which is negative 1. And then minus z. Instead of z, I'm going to write what z is equal to, and that's going to be 2. And this will equal 0. Well, can I solve for x given this information? I can. Let's just work with this equation. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And that that's also negative 2 is equal to 0. Combining like terms, x minus 4 is equal to 0. Well, if I add 4 to both sides, I end up with x is equal to 4. So now I know what x is and what y is and what z is. So my order triple will be in the format of x, comma, y, comma, z. So I'm going to write what x is, and that's 4, comma, my y is negative 1, comma, my z is 2. So my answer is 4, negative 1, 2, included in parentheses as an ordered triple. Well, let's go ahead and look at the next example. Example 5. Same thing, the very first thing we need to do is write our augmented matrix. Our augmented matrix for this is going to be 2, 1, negative 1, vertical bar, the answer of 10. Second row is negative 1, 2, 2, and 6. Last row is 1, negative 3, 2, and negative 15. Then what I want to do is get it in row echelon form. Well, I need a 1 in this position. Well, if I look here, row 3 already has a 1 in that position, so I can start by interchanging rows 1 and 3. So let's interchange row 1 with row 3. This now becomes 1, negative 3, 2, and negative 15. Row 2 is negative 1, 2, 2, and 6. And row 3 is 2, 1, negative 1, and 10. Next, what I need to do is get zeros underneath that 1. Well, if I add row 1 and row 2, I'm going to get a 0 for row 2. So my next row operation is going to be to add row 1 to row 2. And again, that's going to give me a new second row. Well, if I add 1, negative 3, 2, negative 15 to row 2 of negative 1, 2, 2 and 6, 1 plus a negative 1 gives 0, negative 3 plus 2, negative 1, 2 plus 2 is 4, and negative 15 plus 6 is going to be negative 9. So I end up with, again, my first row didn't change, it stays as 1, negative 3, 2, and negative 15. My second row changed here to 0, negative 1, 4 and negative 9, but the third row didn't change, and I'll leave it as 2, 1, negative 1, and 10. Again, the goal is to get that 2 to be a 0. Well, if I multiply row 1 by a negative 2 and add it to row 3 to give a new row 3, I'm going to get a 0 in that position. So let's multiply row 1 by negative 2. I end up with a negative 2. 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. 2 times negative 2 is a negative 4, and negative 10 times negative 2 is a positive 30. And I'm going to be adding that to 2, 1, negative 1, and 10. If I add, negative 2 plus 2 is 0, 6 plus 1 is 7, negative 4 plus a negative 1 is negative 5, and finally 30 plus 10 is 40. My first row didn't change, our second row didn't change, and here's our new third row, 0, 7, negative 5 and 40. So I have the 1 and the zeros underneath it. The next thing I need to do is get negative 1 to be 1. Well, if I multiply row 2 by a negative 1, that negative 1 will turn into just 1. So the next row operation that we're going to do is multiplying row 2 by a negative 1 to give us a new row 2. Okay, well that means that my first row doesn't change. I write it down. My second row is going to change. Well, 0 times negative 1 stays as 0. Negative 1 times negative 1 becomes positive 1. 4 times negative 1, negative 4. Negative 9 times negative 1, positive 9. Row 3 does not change. So now I have a 1 with zeros underneath it, the next one in the diagonal, and I need 7, that number, to change to 0. Well, what row operation could I use there? 
I could multiply row 2 by negative 7 and add it to row 3. So negative 7 times the second row plus the third row is going to give me a new third row. So let's do that on the side. If I multiply row 2 by negative 7, 0 times negative 7 is 0. 1 times negative 7, negative 7. 4 times negative 7, positive 28. 9 times negative 7, negative 63. And adding that to row 3 of 0, 7, negative 5, and 40. Right, if I add down, 0 plus 0 is 0. Negative 7 plus 7 is 0. 28 plus a negative 5 gives 23. And negative 63 plus a positive 40 gives a negative 23. So that's my new third row. So if I write my augmented matrix, I now have 1, negative 3, 2, negative 15. The first row didn't change. 0, 1, negative 4, and 9. The second row didn't change. And my new third row is 0, 0, 23, and negative 23. All that's left now is to get a 1 in this position, because everything else has already been obtained. Well, how would I get 23 to be 1? I can divide by 23. Again, that's not part of your row operations, so instead of dividing by 23, we say we're going to multiply row 3 by 1 over 23. And that, again, is going to become your new row 3. So if we do that, the first row doesn't change. The second row, again, doesn't change. The last row, 0 times 1 over 23 becomes 0. 0 times 1 over 23, again, stays 0. 23 times 1 over 23, again, that's like dividing by 23. That gives a positive 1. And negative 23 times 1 over 23, again, it's like dividing negative 23 by 23, gives me a negative 1. I am now in echelon form with my diagonal of 1s and zeros underneath. So I use back substitution to solve. Back substitution says make this back into linear equations and substitute to solve. So I write x minus 3y plus 2z is equal to negative 15. For my second equation, I don't have an x, but I have y minus 4z is equal to 9. For my last equation, z is equal to negative 1. Well, do I have enough information to solve? I do. Let's start by finding my y first. So instead of y minus 4 times z, I'm going to replace z with negative 1. And that's going to equal 9. Well, cleaning up, I get y plus 4 equals 9. If I subtract 4 from both sides, y is going to end up being 5. So, so far, I have that z is negative 1 and y is 5. All I'm missing is my x. Well, how would I find that x? Plugging it in, I get that x minus 3. Instead of y, I can write 5 plus 2. And instead of z, I can write negative 1. And that's going to equal negative 15. So x, 3 times 5, is minus 15. 2 times a negative 1, minus 2 is equal to negative 15. Combining like terms on the left, x minus 17 is equal to negative 15. If I solve for x by adding 17 to both sides, x is equal to 2. So now I have my x, I have my y, I have my z. So as an ordered triple, my answer would be 2, comma, 5, comma, negative 1. So my answer is 2, comma, 5, comma, negative 1. The next video is going to look at special cases of linear systems.